and there are three deacon candidates and um, I'm just going to introduce you now and you just come up in, in sequence. So first is Carol, then we're going to have Jewel, and we're going to have you men go last and then... Uh... Good morning, Bridgeway. My, hi, my name is Carol and I have been attending Bridgeway Church for around 15 years. My then boyfriend and now husband, Jeremy and I, started to attend together. Many will probably not remember us from then as I was painfully shy and my husband was super introverted. He is still very introverted. For many of those first years, we attended service and left quickly and quietly. While being, while being members at Bridgeway, we got married and started our family quietly. I don't think we even told our then pastor Danny that we were getting married. I was comfortable not being a part of the community and I was happy to just grab my Sunday sermon and go. <clears throat> I always had an excuse for not being an active member of the church. We were busy, tired, shy. The reasons were always valid and true, but they were still excuses. After attending church in this manner for three to four years, we moved to Alliston to start our business. Because we had not made any ties, it was very easy to leave the church. Actually, we left the church shortly after my oldest Micah and I were baptized. I honestly thought that no one would know if we did not show up. Years later, when we returned to Bridgeway, Pastor John joked that because we had disappeared after our baptism, he thought he had baptized us wrong. Living in Alliston, we grew our family and had two more children, but we continued to not attend church. And as you can guess, with more kids and a new business, I had better reasons and excuses. The next few years were a blur, but I remember that in my heart, I knew I needed God in my life. I felt that my life was missing something and the urge to attend church started to grow. I spoke with Jeremy and we decided that our faith was important and we needed to make some changes. We found our way back to Bridgeway. It was easy to fall back into old habits, but something had changed. I didn't want to be unaccountable. I didn't want to find it easy to leave God in church. I needed to serve God and be a part of a community that prays together for each other. So I prayed for courage courage to really be a part of this church. And as only he can, God gave me the heart and strength to put aside my discomfort and approach others to reach out and connect. Today, I feel like this community is a large part of who I am. My last 10 years here have formed who I am not only in this church, but who I aspire to be outside of here. I fought against the idea of being a deacon as it is a promise to serve God. Old habits die hard and I wanted to serve him on my own terms, where I can easily walk away. But I pray for courage again, and so here I stand giving a testimony that I never thought I'd do because of my shyness. I know that I am lacking in so many ways, and regardless of whether I become a deacon or not, I will continue to serve him in this church. I stand before you today to say no to being led by my excuses and shyness, and to make a public commitment to God that I want to be led by him. Thank you for listening to my testimony. My name is Jewel. Uh, I've been with uh, the church um, for as long as I can remember. I grew up in Mirar uh, and attended Bridgeway when I um, graduated from high school. Uh, I've always been surrounded by the church. Uh, my family is Christian. Uh, I went to a Christian school. Um, I attend the church regularly. And I've always been involved uh, for as long as I can remember. But uh, looking back, uh, I didn't always uh, serve uh, for the right reasons. Uh, sometimes it was because uh, just to do it with friends, uh, to get some community service hours, or because someone asked me to. Uh, but in hindsight, uh, seeds were being planted. I swear I didn't uh, hear Pastor John's sermon beforehand. <laughs> um, when I went off to university, uh, I left the city and uh, my parents and family had moved away. Uh, so I had lost a lot of the uh, connection to the church that I'd built up growing up. Um, even though I still attended church uh, in another city, I didn't really commit to being a part of that community. And I often would drive back to Toronto uh, just to uh, attend service at Bridgeway. 
But even then, because I lived in another, another city, I uh, didn't commit to serving or consistently being a part of the community back then. Uh, there were times when, uh, because of this, even though I wasn't, I didn't go off the deep end, but I was definitely surrounded by uh, people who I considered smart, but weren't uh, Christians. And I think during that time, my faith was uh, influenced by that. There were times when uh, I fell into sin and um, it, it wasn't just a, a faith thing. It, I got myself into trouble and uh, it was God who uh, not only saved me spiritually, but uh, I was literally saved by the church back then. And uh, as I came back um, to Toronto after school, uh, coming out of, uh, coming back to the community, uh, starting to serve again, um, God really moved my heart to uh, commit to being a part of the church. And at that time, I also uh, got confirmed a couple years back. But at the same time, uh, I was still, it, it felt like a casual commitment. It felt like uh, I was uh, being a part of the church because uh, this is where I was comfortable. Uh, this is where I'd grown up and uh, I enjoyed it. Um, but more recently, uh, God has challenged, challenged me uh, in interesting ways. Uh, I, I prayed, I prayed for God to test me and he tested me the very same day, um, uh, in our life group, uh, we prayed for more prayer and that was also answered. Uh, God seemed to be directly intervening in, uh, many different parts of my life. And then when the deacon nomination, uh, came up. Uh, I realized that our life group had actually um, studied Timothy together uh, only a couple months before that. It seemed that uh, things were, had been almost set up and the, the seeds of service that had been planted uh, in my childhood, which I had let uh, sort of wither away, um, had been uh, growing again and watered again the last couple of years. And uh, it felt as if uh, God had spoken uh, maybe sub in subtle ways and not so subtle ways, uh, encouraging me to uh, accept the nomination. Uh, I'm, I still stumble. Uh, I still... There are things I struggle with, um, but I believe that the, the seeds of service that God planted in my heart uh, have really taken root. And I want to, I really want to serve the church uh, in a more committed capacity um, and uh, really put the roots down uh, as well. All right. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. Um, so I'm the third one. Um, and before I start, I think I do need to give a little bit of a preface. Um, while there is symbolism in the number three within the Bible, the reason why we have three today is because of me. So uh, I just want to give credit where credit's due and just want to thank um, Elder Graham, Pastor John, and my wife uh, for allowing me the time to kind of discern. I mean, I've been discerning uh, this process for a long time, but uh, again, just to give you a little bit of a preface is uh, for anyone who knows me, I'm constantly busy. Uh, being busy is uh, part of my character, but also one of the potential cons of how I lived my life. And last year was quite a big year for me in the sense that um, 
I got confirmed, uh, to, to name a few, I got confirmed, I got engaged, I got married, I got a new job, and I got a new home. And so I think, I thought personally, you know, there, there, those are some good enough reasons to why I should probably make sure uh, I, I reflect properly. And again, I did. It's just um, having come out of this, I got married literally about a month ago. I, I kind of was a little overwhelmed that I needed that extra time. So again, thank you, Church, for allowing me that time to now share my testimony with you. Um, and so just to start off, as I mentioned, I, it wasn't too long ago since I gave my confirmation testimony. And since uh, some of you may have heard the story of my upbringing and my faith journey, today I'd like to share about what deaconship means to me and uh, my heart towards the idea of deaconship and servant leadership. Um, so ever since I was young, I was caught up in this pursuit of uh, goodness. I wanted to do the right thing, uh, the acceptable thing, and the sensible thing, and always present myself in the best light possible. Life seemed pretty black and white to me, and I could easily rationalize which of the two was the better choice. And for as long as I could remember, I've served at church because, uh, similar to what Jewel mentioned, it was fun, it was the right thing to do, and because I knew it would please God. And as great as this may be, this didn't come necessarily from a heart of obedience, love, or humility, but rather from wanting to be faultless and self-righteous. And so I could have gone my entire life not realizing that chasing after a life of goodness without knowing the goodness of God is simply like chasing the wind. However, through the various memories, experiences, and encounters, uh, Christ showed me that, um, you know, that that necessarily isn't the case, and I now know why, and I am wholly and unconditionally saved. There is nothing I can do to win God's love for me. My identity and my worth is not chained to my own good works, but instead, I am found in the grace of God that purifies and refines me, and gives a sinner like myself a purpose, a calling, and a reason to serve. God reminded me of this incredibly liberating truth during this season of my life as I reflected on what deaconship means. He reminded me that serving is a response to the freedom God has gifted us, an act of worship and a heart of sacrifice. And it is not an act to prove my faultlessness or goodness or to place myself on a pedestal or to even earn his grace. He reminded me I don't have to serve, but that I get to serve and it helps that I want to serve. God also reminded me that taking on roles and responsibilities at the church is not simply a Sunday responsibility, but a life commitment that extends beyond the walls of the church. I believe that deaconship or any means of serving at church should not become a burden, but rather it should still hold its weight of responsibility. Pastor John's message on deaconship really challenged me to reflect on what kind of man I am outside of the church. Who am I at home? Who am I at work? Who am I with my friends? Am I truly striving to be the salt and light wherever I go? Do I show grace to others just as Christ has shown me bottomless grace? And do I strive to be Christ-like in my everyday life? The truth is, this reflection brought me to realization that I am more sinful and more broken than I'd like to admit. But in the same breath, this realization brought to me, uh, brought me to my knees to, convince, to confess I cannot do anything without God and that he truly sustains and carries me through each day. In this place of feeling unworthy and undeserving, God reminded me that I don't have to be faultless in order to be used by him. It is by his grace and his grace alone that I am able to stand before him and all of you today, and to respond by using this freedom to serve humbly in love, as stated in Galatians. I am thankful for a lot of things, but at this time for specifically two things. One, is the privilege to serve. It is a privilege to obey his calls because God uses a sinner like myself to build and serve his church. And two is to carry on. I need accountability and I am grateful to be surrounded by my brothers and sisters of this church who is a wonderful community. And it is because of this freedom that I am here and that I am led to wherever I am called next. Being busy isn't a good enough excuse. It just simply means that something is not a priority over another. Whether I am called to serve in one capacity or another, it is the desire of my heart that I would prayerfully and obediently respond to the call that God has affirmed me to be. Christ has set me free, and freely I give myself to be used by him. 
and it has always been, always will be, a great honor to be able to serve my brothers and sisters of this church. Thank you, Bridgeway.